why would you add a relay to your electrical system and how do you do it? We're gonna show you. Have you ever wanted to add high powered lighting to your vehicle or maybe an electric fuel pump, electric fans? All those things draw a lot of current and really don't need to be running through your existing wiring. Now we went really in depth on how to diagnose relays on an earlier video, so we'll be sure to link to that. So if you want all the inner workings of a relay, we actually take them apart, show them how they work and everything and how to test them, then be sure to check out that video. Do you ever wonder where your money goes? Don't we all? Well, North One is the sponsor of today's video and they understand a thing or two about the trades industries. Now, I personally talked with the CEO and North One was actually birthed on the hopes of providing solutions for their family business as electricians. Traditional brick and mortar banks typically don't understand how blue collar businesses operate, so typical solutions are not the answer. North One is here to help the owners, the managers, and even the techs in the field. As an owner, you always have access to your money 24-7, and you can apply for lending for up to $250,000. If you have multiple employees, you can easily create and manage cards for expenses. This can be quickly done on the Secure North One app or on their website. They even have a virtual envelope system that helps to ensure that you remain profitable throughout the months and throughout the year. Do you know when all your bills are due? Well, you don't have to anymore. You can pay all your bills at one time. However, North One won't actually distribute the money until the due date. Now, this ensures that you keep your money in your account as long as possible but you still reap the benefits of getting an early pay discount if you decide to pay early, or at least you won't get a late fee. And all of your transactions automatically integrate with QuickBooks, PayPal, Square, or a host of other options. You also get real business lending that will provide resources to you based on your company's credit. Now, I applied for lending through North One. We had an answer within 24 hours and the money was almost immediately available. Give North One a try and see if they can't provide solutions for your company that your banker just can't. This is just a mock-up of what might be an electrical system in a classic car, in an old truck, uh, in older vehicles. It may not even be a classic car, uh, but times before we had high definition lighting, uh, LED lighting, things like that. Uh, where we would have uh, not only low power stuff going to like incandescent bulbs that didn't draw a lot of power, uh, but also things like the power running through the switches. So in this case, we've got a light that's powered obviously from this battery here, but the battery is going through the fuse and the fuse is sending power uh, through the switch. And that's how the power is making it to the light is through the switch. You may ask, well, how else is it going to get there? Well, we can do things like adding a relay, which is exactly what we're going to do. And how does that work? Well, we're gonna explain that in just one second. So when you're wanting to add things like uh, xenon bulbs or high powered LED bulbs, or maybe even add a, an electrical fuel pump uh, to a car that has a you know, mechanical fuel pump, maybe you're putting an LS in it or a Coyote engine uh, in your ride and you need an electric fuel pump, well, those draw a lot of power. Um, other things would be like uh, electric fans where you're doing away with your clutch fan and adding an electric fan. Those things draw a lot of current, draw a lot of amps, and you don't need to be utilizing the existing wiring that's in the vehicle. However, you can utilize a lot of it and just run your high powered wires where you need them. So let's get started and explaining what I'm talking about. So this is a simple Bosch style uh, five pin relay. Uh, you can also go with a four pin relay, which is a little simpler, but most of the time you're seeing a five pin relay. And by the way, you can get these five pin relays with pigtails on them. In other words, where a plug, just a single plug plugs on here and the wires are hanging off and then you can wire into the wires and, and wire into the pigtails. Uh, but you can also use just normal spade connectors will fit on these pins. Now, if you go to a smaller style pin, uh, then your normal uh, spade connectors are not going to work on there. And then even your smaller five pin relays, uh, some of them are a little bit smaller where the uh, two of them have the larger prongs. Anyway, regardless, 
Get them with pigtails and that's gonna solve your problems. However, your typical uh, five pin Bosch style relay, you can plug your spade connector right there on the pins and that's exactly what we're going to do. Now, how does this work? Well, it's actually pretty simple. Uh, matter of fact, we did a complete video on how to diagnose a relay and we'll link to that so you can look at that if you want more in depth on a relay, but real quick, so basically on these pins, they are numbered 30, 85, 86, 87, and 87A. Now don't ask me how they come up with these numbers. Actually, I looked it up one time. Anyway, regardless, that's what they're numbered. Now 85 and 86, all that is is there's a positive and negative coming in to power the relay. That can be really low power. That can be coming from a switch. Uh, all it's going to be doing is basically switching this relay. Now, normally closed on this relay is 30 to 87. So in other words, this is where your high power will be coming in, your positive coming in, uh, and that's gonna be your high power wire that's gonna be powering everything else. And power is flowing through to 87A. So this is normally closed. Without the relay energized, this is closed. So this circuit is going power from here to here. So if there's power coming in on this wire, it's powering this pin here. Now, when this is energized, when this switch is energized here and power is flowing here, then it basically switches to 87. And this is now open and 87 is closed. So now your power is coming in through here. So on the five pin relay, basically you can power two different things. And when the relay is energized, it's powering one thing. When it's not energized, it's powering another thing. Now, if you don't want anything powered, then basically you just don't put anything on 87A, or you can run a four pin relay, which is everything except 87A, and only when it's energized is 87 then closed. So just a quick understanding of how a relay works. Now, you really don't have to know all that. Let's explain it a little more detail with some somewhat real world scenarios. So what we have here, battery, 12 volts, right? Uh, we have a switch, ignition switch, that would be in your vehicle. We have a fuse panel, and then we have a switch, like a light switch. So if I turn the ignition on on the vehicle, nothing's happening. If I push the button for the light, we see the little ring light up right there, and we see the incandescent bulb light up. Okay, that's kind of how everything's working right now. You've got a classic car, a classic truck. That's what happens. Power's flowing through all of this, flowing through the switch, straight, straight to the light, turn the switch off, light goes off, or turn the ignition off and light goes off, right? Okay, so what if we want to upgrade our lighting? Well, let's do that. First, let's do something really simple. So let's just say all we were gonna do is say upgrade the LED bulbs and our turn signals, our brake lights, our, our uh, stop lights, that sort of thing, or tail lights. Um, and that's all we're going to do. All the low power stuff, stuff that doesn't take a lot of draw. You can probably do that and do nothing but say, okay, we're going to unplug our LEDs or unplug our incandescents. So we're going to re remove our incandescent bulb, hook up our ground here to our LED. So really nothing's changed. Again, there's not a lot of power flowing through here, so we can get away with just routing everything like it was with incandescent. And now we just have an LED. So now when we turn the switch on, power's on on the switch. So ignition on, switch is off, LED is off, switch is on, LED is burning. Everything's fine, right? Which I highly recommend if this is going to be a turn signal, you're going to need to add an electronic flasher. So basically you'd put this in line and then you can actually dial in how fast the flash you want to happen but basically the LED is not gonna act like an incandescent and utilize that flasher that's on your vehicle. You're gonna to have to run one of these where you can, again, dial this in electronically on how fast you want that to flash. Anyway, but the LED will work in its place. Now, if we wanted to add something high powered like a xenon bulb or uh, some kind of, you know, just HD bulb, these draw a lot of current and it's not meant to flow through a switch like in your old vehicle. So how do we do that? Well, very simple. In fact, let's 
go ahead and unplug the LED. We'll turn our ignition off. We're gonna leave our LED in place and let's add our high powered bulb. Don't make fun of our setup here. It's what we got to work with. Now we'll go ahead and hook up our ground and you'll notice, so I'm running my ground to ground. So if we are working at the headlights, you could literally, you know, find a good ground for your headlights, not utilizing the ground that may be coming off your switch. Now, rather than running power through this little bitty power wire right here, which is that's probably a five amp fuse too, we need something say 20, 30 amp fuse and we need a little larger wire to power that. Well, we don't have to rewire everything that we already have. In fact, we could probably rewire straight from a fuse or go straight from the battery to a fuse and then to a relay. So let's get this relay put in place. Again, don't make fun of our methods here. And now what we wanna do is what we have, we have 85 and 86 on each side right here. And that's going to run from our uh, grounding to our actual switch. So we're gonna energize this with 85 and 86. So I'm just gonna take my wire off of my switch here. Gonna put it on one side of the relay. I'm gonna take a brand new ground here. Plug that into my relay. Go over to my grounding bar here. So now I've got ground run to the relay. I've got power coming in through the switch to the relay. But now I need power that we're actually going to power this bulb with. So we've got this power wire here. And this bottom pin down there is the 87. And that's where I want to go to. In other words, I don't want that high powered bulb coming on until our switch is on. So that's our normally open. So that's going to remain open until the switch comes on and then it goes closed. Now, what I want to do now is pretend that we are going to be utilizing this LED as like a daytime driving light, which again, your typical older vehicles don't have daytime driving lights. So can you add daytime driving lights as easy as adding a relay? Yes, as long as your bulbs will recognize that. So you could add LEDs or a lot of times you're they have halos uh, around uh, some of those high powered lights that you can replace. So this is how you can do it. So I'm just gonna run, this is gonna be our normally closed pin. So as long as we have power coming in to this relay, which is what we're about to add now, then power will be coming to this LED. Then we call on the switch and then this LED will go out, our daytime driving lights will go off, and our high powered bulbs will come on. Let's show that here in one moment. We're gonna add our power wire. Gonna add it to this big 25 amp fuse right here. Then take this and add it to this top pin, which should be number 30. So that's our main power coming in so as long as the ignition is on there is power flowing through this 25 amp fuse directly to this relay now that power is coming out only through this wire here until we turn this switch on which will then send power through here to light up this bulb so let's see what we got so light switch is off ignition is on we got our daytime driving lights right Okay, so we're going down the road and now it's nighttime. We want to turn our high powered LEDs or xenon bulbs on, hit our light switch, and now the LED goes out and now we're powering the high powered bulb. So, but we're not powering it through that switch. All the switch is doing is energizing the coil on this relay, which takes very little current. And the heavy duty current is flowing through the relay, which is able to handle 30 to 40 amps, depending on what relay you have. It's powering this bulb right here. And again, we have the large wires on the ground. We have the large wires feeding through the relay and the large wires actually going from our fuse panel and straight to the relay, but not through the switch. 
So the same thing could happen, again, if you needed a fuel pump or you needed to add uh, fans, uh, so elect electric fans that are going to cool much better than your typical clutch fans. Uh, also save on horsepower as well and even have an auxiliary fan for say uh, when your air conditioning comes on in the heat of the summer and draw more air not only across that condenser coil but also through that radiator keeping everything nice and cool. So that's quickly how you can wire in relays to utilize the existing wiring in your vehicle but add to it where you need to for those high powered situations without you burning up uh, your electrical system in your vehicle like overdrawing through uh, the, the fuses and actually popping fuses and overpowering the small wiring through switches uh, and the necessity of not having to actually replace switches. We sure hope this helps a little bit. If you're more confused, then please let us know in the comments. But if it also helped you out, let us know in the comments as well. And if you plain out hated our video, let us know in the comments. And give us a thumbs down if you want to. Otherwise, would you give us a thumbs up for the video and also subscribe to the channel if you haven't already? And by the way, have a great day and keep smiling.